Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Lord, I thank you. I love you. I praise your holy name, Lord God. I thank you for another wonderful opportunity, Lord God, to preach your glorious gospel, to bring about victory, to, to minister a gospel of salvation and deliverance to those that will simply put their trust and, and believe upon you, Father God. Thank you, Lord God, for sending your son to die for us, to set his holy blood for us, to save us, to sanctify us, and to wash us from our sins. Father God, we love you. I love you. I give you all the praise and all the glory. My name is Michael McKee. I'm with Free Indeed Prison Ministry, and I'm here on another Friday to preach the glorious gospel of Christ to you today. And uh, I've been in, in Isaiah for, for weeks now, and, and I'm still in Isaiah. We're still going to be in Isaiah. And, you know, my, my earnest call or, or just desire for, for the religious world and I'm speaking to the religious because it's, you know, I pray, you know, that, that those that are tuning in, you know, would have no idea of, of all the false doctrines that are going on in this world. I, 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 you know, that's what really hinders people from entering in and, and from simply believing and trusting in the blood of Christ alone are the foolish doctrines and, and the theologies and, and, and my earnest call and desires for the religious to come out of this perverse, wicked, uh, debased, filthy, theological, religious generation, and just come out of it, just come out of it. It, it does nothing for you, it, it keeps you bondage, it keeps you locked into sin, and it, and it, it just completely hinders your, your conscience and your judgment of any morale, and it just, it just, it doesn't do anything for you. And, and I, I just had to get that out, I had to get that out. But uh, turn with me to uh, Isaiah, Chapter 5, and uh, we're going to start at verse 11. Uh, in this chapter, it's, it's simply speaking to the religious. It's speaking to the, the Jerusalem. It's speaking to Judah. It's speaking to the house of Israel. It's speaking to those that profess to know God. It, it's speaking to them, this whole chapter. And there's uh, six woes in this chapter, but uh, Lord willing, I'm only going to speak on two of those woes. And... Uh, I just pray that the Lord would, would give me the, the, the utterance to, to, to speak in, in, in clarity and, and so that you may understand clearly, clearly what the scripture is saying. And we'll start at verse 11, chapter 5, Isaiah, verse 11. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink. And first and foremost, let's, let's figure out who is them that he's speaking to, and, and, and what exactly is this strong drink? Uh, the scriptures completely speaks for themselves. If you have yourself a King James Version Bible, it, it, it lays it all out for you. Ask the Lord to give you understanding. Ask the Lord to lead you and guide you through the scripture that you may make the connections that need to be made, that the Lord can give you understanding of those scriptures. It's all laid out. There's nothing hidden in these scriptures. You see, in, in the Old Testament, when there wasn't a, a Apostle Paul, when there wasn't a, a Apostle Peter, when there wasn't an Apostle John, when there wasn't all these apostles that, was, that the gospel was revealed to, these were all dark speeches. It was just a puzzle pieces with every piece here, there, no connections whatsoever. They had no clue of, of what it is that these prophets were talking about when God was using them to speak. But now God has used these apostles to bring the, the revelation of the scriptures together, that there is no more mystery of the scriptures. There is no more mystery when it comes to salvation, when it comes to redemption, when it comes to being rescued and delivered from sin. Hallelujah. There is no mystery. Now, there are mysteries of, of, of when Christ is returning. There are mysteries of, 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 of what's going to happen at that day and all these different type of things. But when it comes to salvation, when it comes to deliverance, when it comes to redemption, uh, uh, wrought by Jesus Christ, there is no uh, mystery according to that. There's none at all. And, and so let's turn over, keep the spot here. But I want you to see what this strong drink is and, and, and who it is that he's speaking to, to make it clear. It's in Isaiah 28 and 7. We're going to take a little glimpse at that. Isaiah 28 and 7, it says, But they also have erred through wine, and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. Uh-oh, there it is. There it is right there. That's who, that's who the them are. 
the priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. There it is. That's what the air, that's the, that's the strong drink right there. That's the strong drink. That's the, that's the, the wine. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. And I want you to understand that this is not how the people are, are seeing these people. This is how God is seeing these people. This is how God is seeing these prophets and these priests. You see, he's talking about how whenever somebody is, is drunk in the natural state, you see, their vision is blurred. They can't see clearly. They can't see. Well, G God is saying, not Jesus. God is saying that uh, uh, these, these prophets and these priests are erring in their vision of him. They can't see clearly his him. They can't see him clearly. They can't see his ways clearly. They can't see uh, 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 what he longs for clearly. Their vision is blurred. Their vision is blurred. They're, they're consuming something else. They're not consuming of him. They're consuming of something else that has their vision blurred. And they're stumbling in judgment. And I tell you, whenever a, a person is drunk in the natural, they may not know uh, uh, they, their, 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 their uh, me mental state is out of whack to where they, they're going to run that red light, even though it's been red for maybe two minutes. They're going to run it anyway. They're gonna, their, 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 their judgment is, 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 is not there. And in the same way, in the spiritual sense, he's talking about your conscience, my friend. Your conscience is, is being seared. Your conscience is, is, is out of whack. It's out of whack. It has no, uh, uh, no stability in it whatsoever. You don't know what's good. You don't know what's evil. You don't know what's right. You don't know what God's ways are. You're, you're blurred. You're blurred because you're consuming of something else. And so let's turn back over here to Isaiah 5 and 11. And, and so it says, woe unto them. He's talking about the prophets and the priests. Let's get to the head of the thing. It's talking about the head. It's not talking about, you know, those that are in the congregation. No, it's talking about those that, are, that, are, that claim to hear from God. Those that claim to have a high status in, 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 in amongst the people. And, and it's talking about them. Because all else dwindles down from that. All else dwindle down from that. If, if, if uh, the minister is, is, is consuming of, of, of something other than what God is, what God says, what, 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 what God desires for his people to be, and, and, and giving the people something else, man, it, it's all going to be filthy. It's all going to be whatever that, that minister, whatever that teacher, whatever that false prophet, whatever they're saying, that's what the people are going to be partaking of. That's what they're going to be dwelling in, eating of, feeding of, drinking of, and so forth. And so it says, woe unto them that rise up early in the morning. And, and I see here uh, people of a very strong passion. You see, I mean, uh, it, it don't matter. I mean, people, you know, write all types of books, all types of books. And, and they may wake up early in the morning to finish this book on sanctification, to finish this book on your, 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 uh, your work towards holiness or your journey in the wilderness to get out of the bondage and, 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 and do all these different type of different uh, mechanisms that they point out in their book that you have to buy for $14.99 that you can maybe cons consider, you know, possibly maybe the things of God if you stick to this book and, and read it, that they've, that they've risen up early in the morning to write, that they stayed up late at night to write, you see? And, and understand that what, what they're considering to be good, harmless, and innocent is actually blurring the people's vision. In fact, their vision is blurred. They're, 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 it's blurring the people's vision of God. And, and it's searing their conscience towards sin. It's searing their, their morale towards sin. You see, they don't see sin as God sees it. You see, they see sin as their doctrine says that, that they see it. You see, if a person says that, man, we're going to be, you know, fighting against the flesh, warring against the flesh every day, you know, until you lay this body down and take your last breath, and then the Lord will change that flesh into some holy, and that's foolishness. That's not what the scripture says. That's made what his doctrine says and made what his book he just wrote says or her book she said. But that's not what the King James Version says. Praise be to God. And your vision is blurred of what God has done in sending his son to that cross to die for you to take your sin away. That's it. That's the, the vision is blurred from that. Anything that leads someone else, that leaves, leads someone to something else or someone else or, or whatever else, it, it, it's completely uh, uh, seared the conscience of the people because it makes them think that God is okay in, with their sin, that they're okay in their sin, and they're just going to struggle like everybody else is with their sin, and, and this is just a norm. 
This is the norm. And friend, understand, it's making the generation of the religious, the theologian, the theological uh, uh, program-based counseling session generation just completely filthy, completely filthy. And, and I want to clarify something, and I want to make it very clear that I have nothing against uh, AA. I have nothing against drug programs. I have nothing against marital counseling. I have nothing against uh, 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 sponsorships and all these other different programs to help people, uh, 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 to, to lead them, whatever, to help them. But get it out of the, the church house. Keep it away from Christ. Keep it away. S separate it. Keep it in the world. Keep it in the world. Keep it for the worldly. Don't bring that philosophical stuff into the church. That blurs the people's vision from Christ. It blurs the people's vision from what God has already done. They don't need, give them Christ. Give them the blood of Christ. Give them the blood. That, that, it, it, does with every, it does away with everything. It does away with the hatred, with the infidelity, with, the, with the, uh, the lust. It does away with the drinking. It does away with the desires to smoke weed and get high and, and, and listen to your rap and your country, whatever it is. It, it does away with all that. It does away with all that. Give them Christ. Keep that junk out of the church. It, it don't it, it, keep it man keep, it, it doesn't belong in the body of Christ the body of Christ is the church the body of Christ is the church and I just want to make that clear I have nothing against none of these but keep it away from the body of Christ amen amen so when it when it talks about woe unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink you know I see in in uh, in Hosea Hosea 6 it talks about uh, follow on that you may know your Lord, that you may know your Lord. And here it talks about those that follow after strong drink. So I see that that making the connection with Jeremiah. I don't know if it, maybe you should go check it out. Jeremiah 17 and 13. You'll see there's another drink to, to consume. There's there's another drink. And that drink is the fountain of the living waters that proceeds from the Lord. The Lord. I want to read it verbatim. It's been. A, I want to go there. I want to read it verbatim. Praise God. It says, "O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of the living waters." Hallelujah. So I tell you, there's two different ways. There's only two things to drink of. Two things to drink of. Either you're drinking of the Lord, the fountain of the living water. Praise be to God, you've been made free. You've been, you've been delivered. You've been rescued. You, 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 you've, been, you've been taken out of the world. You've been crucified with Christ. You, you've been, you're dead to sin. Praise be to God, sin is taken out of your heart. You have received the spirit of Christ into your heart. You have been made free from sin. Hallelujah. Now go drink, go drink, go drink, drink some more, drink some more, drink some more. And I tell you that if, if somebody comes with you with another drink, well, hey, man, you know, you got to be baptized this way. Well, you got to uh, uh, work out, you know, uh, 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 with fear and trembling. You know, you got to keep on going. You got to stop doing this and stop. Man, don't drink of that. Keep drinking of the Lord. Keep drinking of the Lord. Abide in him. Abide. Keep believing. Keep believing. Hallelujah. Despite what they say. That you just on fire and it's going to dwindle out. It's going to, you just, you got to keep on rekindling the fire and all this type of junk because it's going to burn out. Event. Man, don't drink of it. Don't drink of it. You follow on to know the Lord. Don't consume of the things of this world. Don't consume of the philosophical ways of this world. Don't consume. No, keep it with the King James Version scriptures. If it don't line up with the King James Version, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Praise be to God. And if that preacher that, or that self-proclaimed prophet, if his words don't line up with the King James Version, get out of it. Get away from them. Correct them. Praise be if, if need be. Correct them that he may be saved or she may be saved. And if they don't want to hear it, get away from it. Get away from it because it will defile you, friend. It will defile because you got two people trying to teach one another. You got two people trying to teach each other. No, man, there can only be one teacher. And that's the King James Version scriptures. That's the teacher. You see, we follow the lamb wheresoever he goeth. Praise be to God. We don't follow goats. We don't follow donkeys. We don't follow, we follow the lamb. The lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. We follow after him. We follow after God that gave the record of his son. And what he was going to do in Daniel 9, 24. That he was going to make an end of sins, my friend. That he was going to make an end of sin. He was going to make an end of sin. And he did it on that cross. 
He did it. Gabriel told us that he was going to come do it before he was even born. Before he was even born, told us what his name was, what his mission was. Call him Jesus, Joseph, because he shall save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. That's clear. That's clear. And then Jesus tells us right before he goes into the to, uh, uh, Gethsemane and, 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 and prays to the Father. When they are eating and drinking of, that, of, that, of, the, of the eating the bread and he's breaking it and passing it around to his disciples and he takes the cup, he drinks and say, you drink the cup. For this is the cup of the new, of the new covenant. Shed, this is the blood. This is the blood of the New Testament shed for many for the remission. That's Matthew 26, 28. Check it out in the King James Version. Because in every other version, it says forgiveness. In every other version. In every other version. Check it out for yourself. You'll find out do you have the right Bible or not. You'll find out. Because it says forgiven. That's not what Christ went to go do. You see, Christ told that man in Matthew 9 and 6 that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Rise up and walk. Praise be to God. He was already forgiven sins on the earth, buddy. He didn't have to go to the cross to forgive you for no sins when he was already forgiving your sins. Come on, man. Get the understanding of it. It's really that simple. It is. You just simply put your trust in it. You believe it. You steadfast on it. Praise be to God. Is that what you want? Do you want to be free? Do you want to be delivered? Or do you have itching ears and that's what you like to hear over there consuming of the, of the drink, that, that the strong drink that got you stumbling in sin, stumbling in and out of sin, falling in sin and all these. Come on, man. Consume of the living waters that you may become alive and that you may stay alive if you keep on consuming of the living waters that coming from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can stay alive because if, you're, if, if you have sin in your heart, understand you're dead. You're dead. That's how God sees you. That's not how I, no, I may see you existing, but God sees you as dead, my friend. If sin is there, it's death there. Understand? That's how God sees it. That's how God sees it. Come drink of the living waters. You see, this is why it says life was manifested. Life was manifested because we were all dead in sin. So life had to be manifested. That's what 1 John 1 and, and, and 1 says, I believe. Or maybe 1 and 2. The life was manifested. You see, in him was life. That's in John 1 and 4. That's John 1 and 4. Praise be to God. In him was life. So if him was life, that has to be that we were all dead in sin. Trust, and that's what Paul got the revelation of. He got the revelation that we were all dead. All of us. All dead. And I tell you another thing, friend. Christ went to that cross to destroy that body of sin. To destroy that body of death. Praise be to God. When he went to that cross, he went to destroy that old creation that came in through Adam's transgression, disobedience, and, and, and caused all mankind to be wicked, perverse, vile, the, the, degraded, uh, 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 sinful man, sinful woman, sinful children. That's what Christ went to the cross to destroy, that sin, that sin. Not the sinnings and, and all the different uh, 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 tangibles of, of, of all the different ethic, uh, uh, Details, no, he just went to the cross to destroy the main sin that caused us all to be sinners. Praise be to God. That's what Christ went to the cross to do. And so when Christ went to that cross, your body of sin went to that cross. Your old man went to that cross. The old creation created through Adam went to that cross. Praise be to God. Destroyed it there. Killed him there. Buried him there. When Christ was buried, our old man of sin was buried. The body of sin was buried. The old creation was buried. But it's not until you believe, my friend, that you can come out of that grave quickened with Christ. Because he resurrected a new creature. He resurrected, praise be to God. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father expecting henceforth that his, that his sons and his children will be manifest. Hallelujah. That his brethren will be manifest. Hallelujah. That God's children will be manifest. Hallelujah. The Son of God sitting up there right now as a man. The Son of Man. Hallelujah. There's the Son of Man and there's the Father. Hallelujah. And God sends the Spirit of His Son into your heart that you may be a son, that you may be a daughter, that you may be a child. Praise be God. When you believe, though, it doesn't just happen just because you say, I, I, uh, you know, I believe in, in Jesus as an Easter bunny or I believe in Jesus as a tooth fairy. I believe in Jesus as, as my child believes in Santa Claus, friend. And, it, and it's not talking about, I believe that Jesus did all the miracles. I believe that Jesus died and rose again. But do you believe he took away sin? Do you believe he destroyed sin on the cross? Do you believe that he was the Lamb of God to come to take away the sin? Do you believe that was his only purpose? Do you believe that? 
See, that's the faith. And, and the faith is, is that when he went to the cross, my old man of sin went to that cross with him. My body of sin went to that cross with him. I believe that, friend. And I trust that when he died, my old man of sin died. It passed away. Hallelujah. And when he resurrected, I was quickened with Christ. Made a new creature. Old things have, have they died. They died. Praise be to God. When Christ died. They died. So we know not no more Christ after the flesh, but after the spirit, because the spirit of Christ comes in. When the spirit of Christ comes in, it doesn't just come alone, friend. It comes with righteousness. It comes with joy. It comes with peace. It comes with rest. No more struggling with sin. It comes with the divine nature. It comes with God's laws written on that heart. Hallelujah. It comes with something, friend. It comes with a crying out to God. More of you, Father. More of you, Father. More of you, Father. Send your Holy Spirit into me, Father. Be my door. Be your dwelling place in me, Father God. Hallelujah. Send your Holy Ghost, Lord God. More of you, Lord. More drinking. More drinking. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. But what do you wake up early in the morning to consume? Do you wake up early in the morning to consume of a God that, 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 that uh, uh, overlooks your filthy, sinful state? Is that what you rise up early in the morning, pray to a God, and you're consuming of a God, looking for a God in the scriptures that, 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 that take away the, 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 the guilt of your sin, the penalty for your sin, so you, have, uh, uh, you, can, you can pray and then you rise up feeling good that you just prayed and asked for forgiveness for your sinfulness, but you know for a fact you want to do it again, but you don't want to go to hell? Is that the God you pray to? Or, child of God. Do you rise up giving God the glory, giving God the thanks, consuming of a God that has taken your sin away, taking the filthiness of your sin out of your heart? Hallelujah. You rejoice in God for doing it. Do you rejoice in God for doing it all? Hallelujah. Doing it all, doing what you could not do, doing what you had no ability to do, doing what you, man, wanted done all your life but didn't know how to do it. Praise be God. Then you heard that glorious gospel. Then you found that glorious Messiah. Hallelujah in the scriptures. The one that takes away the sin. The one that takes away the sin of the world. The one that gives you a new heart. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Have you found the Messiah? Have you found him? Praise be to God. If you find him, you ain't going to be the same. No more. No more. No more. It's two things going to happen to you when you find the Messiah. Either you're going to be changed in, in, into his image. Into his image. When that spirit of Christ comes into your heart. Or you're going to be so hardened. So hardened against God, so hardened against the scriptures, so hardened against the King James Version, so hardened against what Christ has done, that you will be changed. You will be changed too. You'll be so hardened, so vaccinated, so uh, uh, angry and mad and just so against, uh, uh, and you'll become a minister of the devil, friend. Just like that, you've been turned into a minister of the devil because you're fighting against the truth of the gospel to win other soul, to win others. To, to, your, to your miserable state of sin, to win others to your bondage and your captivity of sin. There's two things going to happen, two things. Praise be to God. Which one will you be? You really don't know until, until you come to terms when somebody preaches that gospel to you. Even right now, you come to terms, man, do I really believe? Do I, really, do I sincerely believe this? Do I truly trust Christ? Do I truly want to be free, though? Do I truly want to give up whatever that is that God is putting his finger on? Do I really want that? Do, do I really want to give that up? Do I really want the life of God? Do I really want the nature of God? Do I really want to be a child of God? Do I really want to be? Which one are you consuming in the morning? Which one are you consuming of in the morning? Woe unto you if you're the latter. Woe unto you if, if, if you're the no. If you're the first. The latter was the one that, that's rejoicing, praise be to God, and having his sin taken away. And having his sin gone by the blood of Christ. Praise be to God. Woe unto you if you're that first one. If you're that first one that wakes up and, and, and you pray to a God that just, you know, covers your filthy, sinful state. Woe unto you. You have a strong drink you're drinking of, friend. You have a strong, you can understand if you are. If you're stumbling into sin, just drinking of a strong drink. Get the, get the revelation of your drinking of a strong drink. If you're stumbling into sin, if you're falling into sin every now and then, you're, you're drinking of a strong drink. You're not drinking of the fountain of the living water. You haven't believed that the Christ came to make you free. Believe it and trust it. Rest in it. Praise be to God. Rest in it. Believe him. Believe him, friend. Believe him. Pray, if you want to go, just believe him. Believe that he went to the cross to wash you in his blood. To wash you in his blood from your filthy state, from your filthiness, from your idols, 
from every uncleanness, from every wickedness, from every sinful desire, friend, from every sinful imagination, from every sinful lust, from everything, from everything that's not of God, he washed it away at his cross. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. He did it. He did it. 2,000 some years ago, he did it. But it's not until you believe it that it will be happen for you, that it will happen for you until you believe it, though, until you believe it. Oh, hallelujah. Let's keep going. Twelve. I'll just read this 11 again. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink that continue until night till wine inflame them and the heart and the vial and the, and the viol. I guess like a violin, I guess. The tabret and pipe and wine are in their feast. It, it, it's talking about the religious. But they regard not the work of the Lord. Friend, this word regard not is actually talking about considering. So you can see it as the religious don't consider the scriptures to mean exactly what it says in the King James Version. They don't, they don't consider it to mean exactly what it says. And so if they don't, since they don't, don't, don't see it or consider it exactly for what it says, they have to get themselves something else to add to it because it's not working for them. That's because they haven't considered the King James Version to mean exactly what it says. When he says that and, and, uh, uh, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Come on, man. The one that says, wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. Come on. The one that says by himself purged us from our sins, purged our sins by himself, by himself. Come, that to me, all these say, I don't need any help. I don't need your help. I don't need anybody's help. I, can, I got this. I got this. And if you look at it, all of them that I just said is an ED at the end. It's finished. It's finished. That's with an ED too. It's finished. It's done. It's done. You see, people see this working here when they say, but they regard not the work of the Lord. I'm tying all this in. I know this is talking about Israel. I know this is talking about Judah. I know this is talking about the house of Israel. But understand, friend, Paul got a revelation. Paul got a revelation that it says, not all, they're not all Israel that are of Israel. You see, not just because you're a Jew on the outside makes you a Jew. You see, the Jews are now those that are circumcised in the heart. So listen, friend, listen. This is talking about those in our, this is talking, this is bringing it to our day. This is bringing, I'm bringing it to our day. It, it, we, I'm talking to the self-proclaimed prophet. I'm talking to those ministers that, 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 you know, are preaching a gospel that has the people blurred in their vision to see God, blurred in their vision to see Holy Christ, blurred in their vision to see the Son of God, blurred in their vision. Praise be to God that they can't see what the cross was about. And so when they see here, when it says, but they regard not the work of the Lord, this work that they talking about that, that in our day, these, these theologians and, 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 and false doctrines, the working is a working, a working, a working. The working is God is continually working. God is going to continually work on me. He's working on me still. And how long is he working on you? He only took six days to, to create heavens, earth, everything in it, man. Uh, and, it, and he's working on you for 30 years, 45 years, 50 years. Come on, man. That's blasphemous. It's blasphemy. It's blasphemy. And you don't even know it. You don't even know it. It is. It's blasphemy. God, the creator, is still working on you, human. Working on you. Come on, man. Come on, man. You have to put down the strong drink of religion, put down the strong drink of philosophy, put down the strong drink of the things of this world, put down the strong drink and drink of the fountain of living water. Praise be to God. Drink of Christ. Come drink of Christ. Find the, find the Messiah in the scripture. Find the Christ in the scripture. Praise be to God. Find them. In, in, of the King James Version. In the King James Version. Hallelujah. And, and so Jesus said something. And uh, uh, he says, when, I remember, whenever, thank you Jesus, whenever they were, uh, uh, whenever he fed the multitude, he fed the multitude, he crossed over the sea, they all looking for him, everybody looking for him, and, and people were like, man, how can, I, how can I work these miracles? What can I do to work? Jesus said, for this is the work of the Lord. This is the work of the Lord, to believe on him whom he has sent. 
Hallelujah. And like I said before, that's not believing on the Easter bunny or believing in him, uh, the miracles and all. No, it's believing that what he did at the cross. Believe in what he did at the cross. Believe in the reason why he went to the cross. Believe in the reason why God sent him in the first place, friend. You see, it all depends on what you believe because what you consume, what you eat, what you thirst on is what you're going to, that's what is going to affect you. It's going to affect you. You see, if I'm constantly putting into my body uh, 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 cookies and, and cakes and ice cream and, and candies and, 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 and I'm just drinking sugar down, you're going to get diabetes, friend. You'll get that. It's going to affect you. It's going to affect you what you put into your. And, and so what you put in your spirit is going to affect you. It's going to affect you, friend. What you're consuming of is going to affect you. You are what you're feeding and eating of. Amen. You are. You are. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. And it affects what you believe. And I'm talking to the religious. I'm talking to those that are religiously bound to their doctrine, religiously bound to their church, religiously bound to their, and I hate saying church if it's not preaching freedom from sin. It's not church if it's not preaching freedom from sin. It's a religious captive organization. That's what it is. It's a religious captive organization, a religious captive uh, uh, prison hold for, for souls. It is not, it's not giving nobody no freedom. It's not preaching freedom at all. It, it, uh, it is preaching freedom. You know what freedom is? I'm, I'm, I'm freed up to sin as much as I want to. I'm freed up to sin as much as I, and they rejoice in this. This is what the joy, the, this is what they rejoicing in. This is what the tablet, the tablets and the vials and, and the pipes and, and all the feasts is for. Man, we just get to sin and God is going to take us on home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We get to continue in our sin and God just overlooks it and we can just stay as filthy as we want, get as much worldly as we want and God is still, he's, he's working on me. He's working on, friend, that's not the work of the Lord. That's not the work of the Lord. And let's go on down. Let's read it some more. And it says, but they regard not the work of the Lord, neither, neither consider, consider. And so I looked up this word consider because I saw that this regard means consider. But this consider here actually means see. It means to see. So I will read it as that. But they consider not the work of the Lord, neither see. The operation of his hands. Praise be to God. And you want to know what? The Lord showed it to my, to, to my fellow brethren, to my fellow brethren, Apostle Paul. He showed it to him. He showed him what this operation, and he uses the, the, the exact wording. The exact wording. Look at uh, uh, Colossians. Let's go to Colossians. Hallelujah. Colossians 2. I'll start at verse 11. In whom also... Ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Ain't nobody have to touch you. Ain't nobody got to put their hands on your forehead. Pray this for me. Pray this right here that I just said. And, and all this nonsense. Let me go ahead and get my scalpel out. and, and get No. Nobody has to touch you, friend. Nobody has to touch you. This gospel touches the heart. The gospel will touch the heart. Praise be to God. But nobody has to put their physical hands on you. Hallelujah. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of sins of the flesh. This is how? By the circumcision of Christ. By the circumcision of Christ. This is what Christ went to the cross to do, to circumcise the heart. That's what it says in Romans 2, 29, I believe, or 28. Check it out for yourself. It's the circumcision of the heart. Taking out that old stony heart, giving you a new heart. With the spirit of Christ, with the laws of God written in that heart, with the divine nature, praise be to God, on this new heart, on this new heart, circumcision speaks of something being taken away, taken out, cutting off, cutting away, not being able to be put back on. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. It, it's circumcision of the heart. Circumcision of the heart. Buried with him in baptism. I'm not talking about water here, friend. It's talking about the death, baptized into his death. The same way Christ, you see, Christ said here, it, 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 it's so amazing to me how people just take scriptures and, and just, just, if they don't understand it, they're going to try to make it to fit something else and somewhere. No, leave it right there. Leave it right there where it, where it is. You see, Jesus told James and John, I have a baptism to be baptized with that you know not of. Jesus, you were already baptized in the Jordan. What you talking about? Talking about his death. 
He's talking about his death. Praise be to God. Paul got the revelation of this, friend. Christ gave him the revelation of this. Christ gave him the revelation. Is, is read it and, and believe it for what it says. That is the faith. That's the faith to believe. You, that's the miracle. That's the miracle right there. To believe it for exactly what it says. To believe the King James Version exactly what it says. Praise. That's the miracle. That's the miracle right there. And God will do the miracle. God will do the miracle. You see, this, this whole thing is a miracle. The whole thing. You see, Christ's birth is a miracle. Salvation is a miracle. Divine nature is a miracle. Righteousness is a miracle. Salvation is a miracle. It's a miracle from God. From God. A divine, a, it was a divine message given to Daniel. It was a divine message given to Joseph. It was a divine happening that happened to Mary. It was a, a divine circumstance, praise be to God, that brought about this incorruptible seed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's divine. When it comes into you, you will be, it, it, it's not talking about men walking through walls and, and, and doing all, no, you just be pure. Your heart will be pure. Your mind will be, uh, it won't be con, 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 uh, uh, all these different thoughts and, and uh, sinful desires and all these things that you're tormented by. If you are tormented by them, this is what salvation is. You see, I'm not talking about the one, the, the one that, that, that is imagining things and, and, and is going off in his thoughts thinking about what happened last week, thinking about what happened last year, thinking about what he used to do, but he don't do it no more because he's trying to get right. Friend, that's not salvation. That's not salvation. If you're mindful of the things that you were, that you were doing, you, you can go back to it. You can go back to it. If you're mindful of it, you can go back to it. Praise be to God. It's new, friend. Old has passed away. The old, the old has passed away. No more recollection. No more recognition. And in fact, the only time that a child of God is, 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 is even thinking about the, the past, the, 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 the vileness that they were in, is when they're rejoicing in the Lord for delivering them from those things, my friend. Is, it, is in the time when maybe someone is going through something and thinking that there's no hope for them. And the Lord brings back to your memory that you used to be such and such way. That you may have compassion. Other than that, friend, a child of God ain't dwelling on no past things, ain't thinking about no past sinnings. It was a torment to them. It was torment to them. Praise be to God before they got saved. It was torment. It was torment. And if it's not torment to you, you're not desperate. You're not de you see, salvation is only for those that are desperate. You see, you call 911 because you're desperate to be saved, to be helped, to be rescued, to be delivered, to be healed, to be whatever. So you call help. You call in reinforcement. Praise be to God. This is what salvation is about. This is what salvation is about. You can only call on the Savior, and the Savior knows your heart. The Savior, the Savior knows when, when you really are crying out to be delivered from all sin, and not just your sinning, not just your, this one sin here, not just this one situation here. No, friend, he's ready to deliver when that person is calling out to be delivered from being a sinner, from being a sinner. What makes them do the sinning? What makes them do the sins and all these friends? That's what Christ saves you from. He saves you from being a sinner. That you will no longer be a sinner. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. That's a nature change, friend. Let's go back to what I was talking about. In, in, in making this connection with the operation of God. In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. And putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him. Hallelujah. Through the faith, through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Friend, in the same manner, in the same manner, the same mir miraculous way. That Christ was raised from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of God. That's what happens in salvation, friend. It's miraculous. God does the miraculous in your heart. God does the miraculous in your heart, friend. Out of the heart proceeds everything. Out of the heart proceeds everything. It's not you uh, 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 having to get the mind right first, you know. The only thing about the mind that you should be doing is repent. Think differently with your mind. Think differently about why Christ came. And I'm talking to the religious. 
I'm talking to the religious. We see, repent means something different to those that have no idea of, 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 of you know, the Bible, have no idea of the scriptures, have no recollection of how church uh, uh, goes and all this type of thing. Because it, it, when a person is ministering the gospel to that individual and they know they're lost, they're going to feel the presence of God. That's going to affect them more than your words, friend. That's gonna, the, 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 the presence of God does more than, than any words, than any words. Praise be to God. They'll feel it. They'll feel it. And they'll know in their heart conviction. They'll know in their heart they're being convicted. They'll know in their heart. They'll know. And so for them, that person is not turning from uh, religious doctrine to believe the, what Christ came to do. No, it's putting away. It's putting away. You see, when I say put away, you can put away the uh, uh, going to get lotto tickets. You can put away going to get the cigarettes. You can put away going to the plug to get the weed. You can put it away. You can put all that away. You can erase his number. You can erase his number. Praise be to God. You can just go to the gas station, get your gas, and leave. You ain't got to get the cigarettes. You ain't got to get the lotto ticket. You ain't got to get the beer. You ain't got to get all the tobacco. That you, you ain't got to get it. If you're real, if you're sincere, if it's torment to you, if it's torment to you, turn away. Turn away, and then God will change that heart. He'll turn away sin from you. He'll turn you away from sin. Hallelujah. In your nature. In your nature. You see, he takes away the longing. He takes away the desire. He takes away the, 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 the want to. He takes that away. But you got to not want to. <laughs> you got to not want to. You got to not want to sin. You see, if you want your sin, hey, he, can do, he can't save that individual. You got to be real because he's real and he gives a real salvation. Because if you're playing games and you, thought, and you come into this where you wishy-washy, friend, you blasphemy. You should have stayed where you was. You're blasphemy. You're profane in the name of God. God is a savior. He's a savior. Hallelujah. His people are not captive. His people ain't bound to nothing. Hallelujah. He's a savior. God is a savior. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the operation, Lord. Thank you for the work of your hands, Lord God. Thank you for sending your son to the cross to do what we could not do on the inside of us, Lord God. To take away, to take away that sin. To take away the torment of sin. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for, for shedding your holy blood for us. For us. For us. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. It says, therefore. What is the therefore, therefore? Well, it tells us because they have, they have not considered and because they have not considered the work of the Lord, because they have not seen or they do not see the operation of his hands. Therefore, my people, the ones that Christ died for, he died for all. He died for all. But because they don't regard his work and consider his operation, they're going into captivity. And Jesus told us clearly, very clearly, that if you know the truth, there's the knowledge. If you know the truth, Jesus also said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. So he also tells us in, 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 in John 8 and, and 34. So you can actually look at John 8, 32. And you'll say, if you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. Jump down to 34 to where it says, he that committed sin is a servant to sin. There goes your captive. There goes your captivity. Now jump down to 36. He says, therefore, if the son make you free, though, you shall be free indeed. Ain't no struggling. Ain't no back and forth. Ain't no stumbling into sin. Ain't no falling down into sin. Ain't no drunkenness, drunken stupor going on, consuming of something else. No, none of that. None of that. Praise be to God. They're free indeed. Free indeed. No longer captives to sin. That's what John said. That's what John 834, 832, and 836. Read them. Believe it for what it says in the King James Version. Because they have no knowledge. They have no knowledge. Friend, I, I see three scriptures here that you can put your knowledge uh, that you should know. I say you should know if you want to be made free. Know these. Put your faith in these. 
These three scriptures, Romans 6 and 6, knowing this, friend, do you know it? Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin may be destroyed, that henceforth you should no longer be slaves to sin. Praise be to God. Do you know it? Is that your knowledge? Is that your knowledge? One more scripture. 1 John 3 and 5. And you know that he was manifested. Do you know, friend? Do you know who the he is? Do you know that he is the Christ? Do you know that he is the truth? Do you know that he is the life? Do you know that he is the son of God? Was manifested to take away your sin. That's what it says in the King James Version. Romans, I mean, uh, 1 John 3, 5. And you know he was manifested to take away your sin. Praise be to God. Know this. Put your faith in this. Romans 6, 6. Knowing this. Know this. 1 John 3, 5. Know this. And this is something that the church, I mean, they, don't, they don't want to know this. They refuse to know this one. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Know ye not. Do you not know? Do you not have any knowledge of this? That the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Know that, friend. So if you know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, then know that he was manifest to take away your sin so that you, will, that you will be able to inherit the kingdom of God. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those three scriptures, know them. Put your knowledge on those. Put your knowledge on those and let the Lord lead you other ways. But put your knowledge on those three scriptures. Put your knowledge on 1 John 3, 5, Romans 6, 6, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Hallelujah. 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 It's a simple gospel, friend. And it's, a, it's, it's, it's simple on our part. It's simple on our part. But it's hard on our part to depart from something that you want. If you want to stay in your sin, it's hard for you to depart from that. It's hard to depart from that. You see, it's not hard for somebody to depart from something that they hate, from something that they don't like. You see, it's a simple gospel to them, and this is a simple choice. Thank you, Lord, for revealing this, this, this gospel to me. Thank you, Lord, for the minister of the gospel that came to me with your mercy, with your love. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. But for that one, where it's, ah, I want the dung. I'm holding on to the dung. I see the pearl. But I'm holding on to the dumb. It's hard for that one, even though it is a simple message. You see, the Lord gave this, 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 this analogy of the strong drink. And you can go so many different ways with this. Because if you think about a drunk person in the natural, if you think about a drunk person in the natural, and in the natural, a drunk person are saying things you can't under their, 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 their speech is slurred. You can't understand what they're saying. Friend, understand, when a, when a child of God sees a person on strong drink of religion, strong drink of doctrine, strong drink of, theolo of theology, they can't understand what they're saying. And in fact, I'll tell you, if, if a person was to come to Apostle Paul with that nonsense, they, could, they wouldn't understand what they're You're drunk. You're drunken, man. I don't understand what you're saying when you say he's working on me. I don't understand what you're saying when you say I'm turning a new leaf. I don't understand what you're saying when you say I'm taking this course to be like this and that. I don't understand what you're saying. You're drunk to me. You're drunk to me. Put down the strong drink, friend. Put down the strong drink. Drink of the waters of this living waters. Hallelujah. Drink of the blood. Hallelujah. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Hallelujah. And he's talking about consuming. Man, I want to go over there and read it verbatim. And, and John, yes, praise be to God. And, and John 6, 29 is where Jesus says, answer them and said, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. That's in John 6, 29. But in John 6, 55, John 6, 55, he says, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. You see, natural food, it stays in your body. The, 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 the nutrients, the the. The, all the things that, that you need in order to stay alive, it stays in your body, all right, to keep you alive. If the Spirit of Christ abides in your heart, you're going to stay alive to God. 
and you won't be dead in sin. This is what he's talking about. You see, that's what the blood went to go do, to sanctify you, to wash you, to cleanse you. You see, this is why the flesh was wounded. This is why the flesh was beaten. This is why the flesh went to the, this is why the word of God became flesh. Hallelujah. This is why the creator became flesh. Hallelujah. To go to the cross, to get rid, to, 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 to get rid of sin, to get rid of the sinful nature of man. Hallelujah. To get rid of the sinful creature. This is what he went to the cross to do. And so all those that have the spirit of Christ abiding in their heart, they're staying alive. They're staying alive and, they're, and they stay consuming of the blood. They stay consuming of the living water. They, con they stay consuming of the bread that is life, which is Christ is the bread of life. That's what it also says in, in, in 648. Can you see your food? Can you see your drink? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity back in Isaiah because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. These honorable men is not talking about how God sees. He's talking about how the people see these people. How their congregation sees these people. He's talking about the big name preachers, the self proclaimed prophets, the self proclaimed apostles, the self proclaimed, whatever it is that they are self proclaiming themselves to be with their huge ministries. And people see them as honorable. He's talking about them. What does he say? And their honorable men are famished. What does famished mean? Without food without any bread, without any sustenance, without nothing to, 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 to provide for themselves or for others. They're dying. They're dying. They're dead already and they're continually dying because they have no sustenance and, they, and all their congregation, their multitude, not only are they dying without any food, but they're not even getting anything to drink. They're not even drinking of anything. Not even drinking of anything. And I tell you, all who take that lifelong journey to reach the land of freedom from sin. Friend, you're going to die from, from a lack of bread of life and you're going to die from the lack of thirst of the living water and you're going to die in your sin on that long journey, on your lifelong journey to reach the land of the free from sin. You're going to die in your sin. You'll never reach it. You'll never reach it. If you're, if, you're, if you're trying to work to get there and trying to make your way to, and you're going to strap up your bootstraps and, and you're going to try so hard to get there, I'm going to get to that land of freedom from sin this day. I'm going to do it. Friend, you ain't never going to get there. You're going to die in your sin, famished and dried up with thirst and, 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 and just, just uh, uh, out there stumbling with a strong drink. Out there stumbling. Falling in sin every day, struggling with sin every day, wallowing in the mire of sin every day. That, it, it's always going to be that way. It's always going to be that way until you believe the truth of the gospel, that Christ came to make you free, that Christ was sent to deliver you, that Christ was sent to rescue out of your sinful state of captivity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you can get off that long, lifelong journey, that you can enter in into Christ where there is freedom, friend where you can come on in. Let him in that you can come on in. Let, what I mean, let him into your heart. Let God do the work in you. Let God send the spirit of Christ into your heart. Let him in that you may come into Christ where in him is no sin. Hallelujah. And whosoever abideth in him, just stay in him, you won't sin. How do you abide? You keep believing. You keep rejoicing. You keep seeking. You stay thirsty. You stay hungry. It says, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. You just stay hungry. You stay thirsty. You keep filling up on him. You stay consuming of him. There is no, uh, uh, that's, that's it. That's it. That's how you abide. That's how you abide. Just keep believing. Keep rejoicing. Keep seeking.
Praise be to God. Therefore, hail hath enlarged herself and opened her, opened her mouth without measure. And their glory, talking about their magnificence, their splendor, their magnitude, whatever, however you want to say it, and their multitude, and their pomp. So it's simply talking about the magnificence, the magnitude of, of, of their ministry, of, of, of what they do, you know, to, to, to bring along people and, and to gather the people in, all that, all that, all the magnificence, the splendor of their ministry, along with those they gathered to, 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 be a, uh, 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 to come to join their, their vain glory, their vain glory of, 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 of whatever they do, their vain glory. And he that rejoiceth shall descend into hell. That's what the it is talking about, hell. And it's talking about those that rejoice in a God that frees them up to be able to sin. Friend, there's, there, there's, there's two freedoms being preached. There's two freedoms being preached. Two gods being preached. One with a lowercase g, one with a capital G. Two Jesus being preached. That, that, that frees the people up to be free to continue in sin. That's the lowercase g. That's the Jesus with no power. And then there's the, there's the Christ. Then there's the Lamb of God. Then there's the Son of God. Then there's the true God. The powerful God. The one that gets all the glory for the salvation that he wrought. Praise be to God. The one that sent his word to fulfill his promise. Wrapped his word in flesh. Sent his word to the cross to take your sin away. Hallelujah. That frees you from sin. Frees you from sin, from the sinful state, from the sinful nature. I'm going to keep saying it because it's not about the sinning things. It's not about, it's not, it goes deeper than that, friend. There's a reason you do it. There's a reason you do it. The nature allows, makes you do it. The nature that, 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 that Adam made a slave to makes you do it. This is what Christ came to destroy that nature, to make you a slave, a ma- that give you a new master. Righteousness. Righteousness is your nature now. By nature, you do the things of God. By nature, hallelujah, there's no more need for a, 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 do, a, a gospel of do's and don'ts. It's not a, and if you hear this gospel as a do and don't gospel, you missed it. You completely missed it. Completely. Read it. Listen to it again. Listen to it again. Go listen to some of the, and, li, I'm, and I'm telling you this, I'm not here trying to uh, promote Calvary Outreach. I'm not here trying to promote free and deep prison ministry. I'm here promoting Christ, the one that saves you from your sin, the one that delivers you from your sin. And I'm telling you, don't go to the other false doctrines, the false teachings. I'm telling you, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't go to it. Preach the gospel to them. Do that. So if you want to hear a do and don't gospel, don't go to the false. Do preach this glorious gospel of liberty. Hallelujah. This ain't no do and don't gospel. Don't go here. Don't do this. Don't say that. Don't act like that. Don't. Friend, a child of God by nature is not going to do that. Go there. Don't do that. Listen to that. Don't. Christ is not going to be a part of a lot of Christ. You see, man, a, 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 a brother, a, a, man, a glorious revelation that the Lord spoke to a brother in Christ, a minister of the gospel, and said in order for sin to enter into an individual that's in Christ, it has to first come in through, it has to come to Christ. And that don't make no sense. People can say, I'm in Christ, but I still sin. Friends, so you saying it's going to come into Christ? Sin is going to come into Christ. Because it got to come into Christ before it gets to you. You in Christ. That don't make no sense. It's blasphemy. It's blasphemy. That's not what the scripture, the King James Version said. It don't talk about practicing sin. It don't talk about habitually sin. It don't talk about sinnings. How, it's talking about those that are in Christ cannot. Cannot. Why can they not? Because they've been in, uh, disabled to. They've been disabled to because they died. A dead man ain't doing nothing. A dead woman ain't doing nothing. A dead cockroach ain't, well, they're probably still kicking. But you got to keep crushing it. Well, I tell you, listen, dead is dead. Dead is dead. It's that simple, friend. Those that are dead, free from sin. The only way to get free from sin is to realize you are dead to sin. 
with Christ when he went to that cross. When he died, the old man of sin died. The old creation died. The old body, the body of sin died. That sinful heart died with Christ in the cross. And when he was buried, he buried, he took it all. He destroyed Satan, destroyed sin, took it all to the, to the, to the tomb, dead, dead. Praise be to God. Realize it, friend, that you may be quickened, that, that God may quicken you out of that, may quicken you out of that tomb, a new creature, new creature, free, free. And it's all through the operation of God. It's all through the operation of God. You see, we at, the, the Lord asked us to preach a foolish message. A foolish message. This is, it, it, that's what it is to the wise. That's what it is to the prudent. That's what it is to the ones that have so much uh, uh, theologi uh, uh, theological background and, and, and all the four years of college and, and all the different things. That don't even teach you the scriptures. Don't even, don't even relate you. Don't even point you to the scriptures. They'll point you to another book that you should read. They'll point you to another class you should take. They'll point you to another program you should go into. But they'll never point you to Christ. Never point you to the blood that sanctifies, delivers, makes you free, makes you holy, makes you pure. It doesn't give you all these wisdom of words and wisdom and knowledge of the world to say. No, it just tells you to preach a simple gospel, a foolish message. Hey, go out there and look at that pole with the snake on it, and you'll be alive from the poisonous venom. You'll be alive. That's what Moses said. Moses told him, go outside and just look at the pole with the snake on it. I just put it out there. God told me to do it. He told whoever look up on it, they heal from the poisonous venom. Jesus said in the same way that that serpent was lifted up. Simple. For this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone would see the Son and believeth upon him may have everlasting life, and I'll raise him up at the last day. Do you see? Will you consider Will you regard the work of the Lord? Will you see his operation that he wrought through his son to make you free? God bless you.